Are you struggling with perfect skin tones? The secret to flawless skin tones is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you that today. First, open up DaVinci Resolve. Here, I have my skin tones. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit because it looks more cinematic. Now, before we get started color grading, we first have to set up our color management. So, what you're going to do, scroll down to Project Settings, and you can see I've already done this here, but for the timeline color space, you wanna put DaVinci Wide Gamut slash intermediate. Then for the output, usually you can just leave this the same, but if you're on a MacBook like I am, I put it as Rec 709A because there's a gamma shift when you use Max for QuickTime. It's annoying, but that's just what you have to do. Now that you have that set up, you're going to add a node, then go to the effects tab and type color space transform. Drag it and drop it onto your footage. So when you're setting this up, you do need to know your camera's footage. I know mine, which is Fujifilm. So mine would be Rec 2020 and Fujifilm F-Log. Now there's a lot of cameras in here, but sometimes there isn't. So just make sure to check and see if your camera's in there. For the output, you're going to put DaVinci Wide Gamut and then DaVinci Intermediate. And you can see now your footage looks really flat. You're gonna add two more nodes, copy the first node that you have the effects on and paste it to the last node. Then you're going to swap this, then change the output color space to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So now we are working in DaVinci Wide Gamut. And the reason why I had you set up the timeline color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut is so that you can use high dynamic range, the color wheels, without having to change color space and the gamma. For example, if I turn this up and down, you can see if I change the color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate, you can see that it doesn't change at all. That's because it doesn't matter now. Your timeline color space is already DaVinci Intermediate and Wide Gamut. Now going back, first you wanna make sure your skin tones are the right exposure. So how we're going to do that is add another node by hitting Option or Alt S, then you're going to turn the saturation all the way down to zero. You can see these are our skin tones and we're gonna want them in a correct right place. So what we can do is with the HDR wheels, we want our skin tones sitting around 512 to 640, depending on the look you're going for. You can even have it above that I wanna go for a little bit of a light airy look. Now right here you can see these skin tones are looking perfect in black and white. So let's turn off black and white. Now, as you can see, the skin tones are looking pretty good. So after this, you're going to go to the vector scope. And if you don't have this turned on already, go to the settings, then you wanna turn on show skin tone indicator. And for right now, I'm going to do show two times zoom so that you can really see all the little areas that you can affect. Sometimes you want this off just in case you're working with more vibrant colors. But for now, since we're working with skin tones, I wanna to see all the little areas that I can affect. Now also with this, we have the lows, mids, and the highs. But for right now, we're gonna focus on all. Once you have this set up, you can then mask, add an area, and hit Shift H. As you can see right now, my skin tones are sitting almost perfectly in the skin tone area. And the reason for this is because I actually white balanced this footage before I recorded it. And that's one of the keys to this. Now, if you didn't white balance your footage, you might have more magenta skin tones or more yellow skin tones. And what you can do to correct that is go to your primaries and you can just drag the primaries to the area that you want. And you can see this area I made too green. Now that's looking good. This is looking a little green. And once you adjusted your skin tones to the primaries that you want, since mine was already white balanced, mine looks pretty good. You can then go into more minor adjustments. Now I'm going to name my nodes really fast. Now, since my exposure and my white balance is correct, I'm now going into more minor adjustments. And how I'm going to do this is with the color warper and I named it just web right here. But what I like to do is find a point where my skin tones look completely correct, and I like to lock off that area. Now that it's locked, I can go to other areas where I feel like it's falling a little bit out of where I want it to be. 
Now, it's okay if some parts are red and some parts are yellow. That's fine, it's natural. But let's say you want it to be just slightly more commercial-like. You can make smaller adjustments like this. Here, I will steal this. And you can see I went way too far on that. But now those pinkish reds are looking a little bit better. And I'm going to bring it all the way back and then start making little minor adjustments. Now you can see it's not too much, but it's also really helping out get those magentas out because a lot of Fujifilm footage sometimes is magenta. And I know a lot of you guys shoot on Fujifilm. So being able to correct it just slightly like this is nice. And I might actually bring that slightly more up, give some more red in there just to make it look a little more natural. Now, if I zoom all the way out, we also have some yellows in the hair here. It's not really affecting the skin tones, but if you wanted, if it was affecting the skin tones too much, you can just bring that in ever so slightly. Now, the reason why I say don't go overboard with this is because sometimes it can make it look really flat. And a lot of times in movies, you might not even notice this, but the skin tones vary a lot. Depending on how they like the scene and how they set everything up, the skin tones aren't always going to be the most perfect thing in the world. Sometimes there's gonna be some magenta hues. Like if you ever see anyone sitting on grass, they'll have reflections in their skin bouncing back from the grass and that's natural. But if you're going for a commercial look, this is how I would do it to get perfect skin tones. And you can see when I turn that on and off, it looks a little better, but I'll show you an example of going too far with this. So let's say we have this and we just bring both of these completely in. So they're right on that skin tone line. And you can see now everything is in the skin tone line, but you lose a lot of that color variation, like up here where there was like more greenish color, that's all gone now. Here where there was more reddish color, that's all gone now. And it kind of just flattens all this color and gets rid of a lot of the nuance. Now, of course, if you do want it a little bit flatter, you can do this and then just turn it down a little bit because it was looking a little bit green up here, but now that I flatten it just a tiny bit, we're getting rid of that. Also, you might have other colors in the scene that you don't want to affect. So sometimes you have to mask out the skin tones, but you want to try avoiding that so that you don't have any artifacts or like make it look weird, but you can mask out the skin tones. Usually I try to avoid that, but as you can see, I can turn that off and I can turn it on and now my tired eyes, yes, these are my eyes, but now my tired eyes are looking a lot more fresh. They're not as red. It's looking a lot more even, almost kind of like a Dune Blade Runner 2049 kind of look where it's like kind of really flat, really flattering. And you still get variation here where it's like a little bit red, a little bit yellow, but for the most part, it's in this like perfect range. Now I'm going to go back to HDR and I can bring up that saturation. Now these skin tones are looking pretty much perfect, but there's a few more things you can do to make it look even better. So one of the first things you can do is mid-tone detail. Now this, if you go too far, it makes your skin look glossy, waxy. We don't want that. If you go too far in the other direction, you can see all the blemishes and stuff like that. So if you wanna get rid of some blemishes the easy way, you can just turn this down a little bit. You can see it's kind of getting muddy here, so you don't wanna to go too far with this, especially if your skin tones are already looking a little muddy. But you can see right here where my wrinkles are, this really helps get rid of them. And I'm just going to bring it up until I see a bunch of wrinkles that I do not want. So maybe around here and there, that's looking perfect. Even though it's a very subtle right here, it is helping to make this a little more pleasing on the eye. Another thing you can do is add a glow. And this is very popular at the moment. A lot of YouTubers do this and I do it and a lot of colorists do this. But you just go to soft light, bring down the shine threshold, bring down the spread, adjust the gain to where you want it, to where it's looking correctly exposed. Bring that up to five and you can see it really smooths this out, makes it look buttery and nice. You can make sure the darker parts of the image don't get affected as much. You can really just smooth that out. 
but you can see it's kind of making the skin tones bleed into the blue of the eye right here. But for this, you can just turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna put it around 0.25. Just smooths it out just a little bit more. And that is the glow. And if we turn those adjustments on and off, you can see it creates more saturation in the skin and it smooths it out a lot more. Now that we have like all these four are kind of adjusting these skin tones, what we can do is we can highlight all four of these nodes and then scroll down to create compound node. Then label this skin tones. Now we have like a little compound node of all the adjustments we did for the skin. And you can see when we turn that off, this is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. And you can see now these skin tones are looking almost perfect. They look super beautiful. It might even be too much for some people. Some people would want more skin variation, like with these yellows, with these magentas. But this is kind of more of like a dune, kind of like super flat, flattering skin tone look. Now we still have some blemishes here and here. And that would be for a more advanced tutorial. This is kind of just the basics of getting skin tones. And since this is more of a commercial color grade, what we can do ultimately is sharpen all this. So we'll bring that down really heavy. We'll get the sharpest part of the images and then soften this. You can see all those blemishes there, but we want to get as much as possible. And you're just sharpening it a little bit. Now, if we zoom in, you can see that is looking a little too much. And I'm actually gonna go all the way up on this, bring down that, bring down that, and I'm going to look at this eye here. And you can see this is really bringing out that detail in the eye. And it looks very milky, it looks very beautiful. And now I'm going to show you how you can even have a look with this, because this is very commercial. This is like very flat and flattering, but maybe you want to have this perfect kind of skin tones in a teal and orange look or a more cinematic type look. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. But first, I'm going to go to stills, grab this just so we have it. Now for a more film-like look, we'll turn off the sharpness. For the out, we can put it as Cineon Film Log. Then we'll put it at Saturation Compression because we don't want anything to clip. Then go down to LUTs, scroll down to Film Looks, and then Kodak 2383. Now you can see this is like, this is a little blown out. It's a little overexposed because we didn't expose it for this. So what we can do, just remember this is here. Now you can see these skin tones are still in a nice place. If we look at our vector scope, they're all around this area. And you might even think it's a little too much with this if we turn it on and off, but I'm going to keep that on for now. Now it looks a little too orange to me right now. So I'm going to, so I have this negative 1000, negative 10. Now that blue in the eye is popping a lot more. Another way you can create a look, let's go here, go dehancer. Place that on. You don't even need the output as this. You can just go 2.4. Now you can see it looks like it messed everything up and that is because we have this on. But if we turn that off, you can see everything is kind of like in the same ballpark. It actually spread out the colors a little more. So if we turn that off, it actually looks like it helped a lot with this. You can go to 2383 on Dehancer. And this actually looks a lot better can bring the color density up, which kind of darkens the colors, but I don't really want to do that. I kind of want a light milky thing going on here. Then for the color boost, you can bring this up and that's now looking really beautiful. You can see I put film grain on top of this and it looks even better now. Now look at that. Those skin tones look beautiful. It's very high quality. This looks super cinematic. And one last tip for getting perfect skin tones, go to compound node. So first you're gonna add a node, bring it down here. Before we do any of this stuff, we're going to adjust the reds because sometimes the reds can be a little dark and you can see the reds do look darker. And this is just an extra tip. You can brighten these reds right here to get a more even skin tone. You can see that does a lot right there. Just brightens it up, makes everything look a lot more even and natural so that when you do go into this stuff, everything kind of matches. 
So really quick, I just wanted to show you how I got my eyes looking so blue. So what I did was I went to the color warper and I locked off my skin tones. Then I went here. My eyes were kind of like in the middle. It was kind of in the gray area, even though my eyes are blue. So I just clicked on that, dragged it to the blue cyan area. And that's how I got this cyan look. Then since it was kind of desaturated, what I did was I upped the color boost and upped the saturation so that my skin was more or less in the same area and my eyes were now blue. And the whites of my eyes look really perfect now. As you can see, the whites of my eyes are looking great, my skin tones are looking great, and my eyeball looks really blue. And that's just how I fixed up my eyeball problem. Now it's looking a lot better. Now that you know the secret to getting perfect skin tones, you should watch this video here on how to get a cinematic look. And if you enjoyed the video, think about liking and subscribing. It really helps.